it's a it's a sports tour as so Honda calls it but you know this is adventure bike rider so let's take it down this green lane Hello and welcome to this ABR first ride review of the Honda NT1100. Brought to you with support from Lindstrands and Halvarsens. It's safe to say the Honda NT1100 isn't exactly the most exciting bike to look at. But when ABR's chief bike tester Julian test rode it on the press launch in Spain, well, he was smitten with the bike's performance and handling. But that was on the mountain roads around Barcelona. What's it actually like to ride? Well, let's go find out. Okay, so we're off on the NT1100 and I don't know if you can see around me but it's beautiful blue skies all around me um, and weather is saying about 34 degrees so it is sweltering but enough about me and the weather and more about this beautiful bike that I'm riding. So this here is the NT1100. It was introduced by Honda uh, at the end of 2021. Uh, to a surprising reception, I thought, you know, there was a lot of people who were very excited about this bike. And uh, whenever we posted about it on social media, there was always, you know, a lot of enthusiasm for Honda releasing a new touring bike. And rightly so, especially as this one was based on the Africa Twin. Uh, you know, they've taken the guts out of the Africa Twin. So the engine, the, the frame, the subframe. Um, and basically put it into a more touring friendly package and it was really telling when we went to Motorcycle Live uh, in December 2021 when all the manufacturers were there bikes on display and out of all of them the one with by far the biggest queue around it was the this bike here the NT1100 every time we walked past it was swamped by people so despite my initial sort of skeptical uh, apprehension of the bike it seemed as though Honda had made a bike that people were really really looking forward to before they even anyone even had a chance to ride it and you know I, I would say initial skepticism from me because in the promo pictures it kind of looked like a big scooter a maxi scooter but then when I saw it in real life any feelings about scooterishness kept purely to one angle there's one unfortunate angle where this bike just looks like a big XADV um, but from every other angle it looks pretty damn cool now the reason it looks like an XADV is because it was designed by the same fellow who did design the XADV so that's not too surprising and the XADV is one of Honda's top selling bikes so you know listen to the data anyway this is the NT1100 what have we got so I am riding the DCT version of this bike, which stands for dual clutch transmission, which um, most people will probably know by now is Honda's automatic gearbox. So there, the bike comes in two versions, which is the manual version or the DCT. The manual version will set you back just £11,999, while the DCT one is £12,999. So it's an extra grand for this model. And with that, you get everything you need to be able to take this bike from the showroom and head out across the Alps, which is, in my eyes is remarkable. This bike represents remarkable value for money. So there are many things that come as standard on here, which a lot of manufacturers would probably try and charge extra for. I'm talking about this five-way adjustable windscreen. It's got a dual uh, TFT and LCD display, which I absolutely love. And I'll go into that in a bit more detail later. You've got cruise control as standard. You've got a five-step heated heated handbars as standard. You've got a center stand as standard, so you can talk, you can uh, adjust your chain, lube your chain when you're out on tour. And most impressively, you get a set of panniers with 65 liters of storage, completely as standard. And you know they're not the best panniers by any means, but I 
think they are more than adequate for going away. Now I'll let you in on a little secret. This isn't my first ride of the MT-1100. I've spent probably about 2,000 miles on this bike now. I took it over to Ireland for a long weekend. Uh, so when I say that the panniers, the luggage is more than suitable for long distance touring, I wouldn't say the Ireland's particularly long distance, but when I say the luggage is good for taking away on tour, it comes from a knowledge of, of having done it. I would add the top box extra, which comes uh, as an add-on. So you, 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 the, the MT-1100 comes with three separate uh, packages, which you can add on, all of which uh, differing prices. The base one adds just the top box. Then there's the middle one, which is touring more comfortable seats. And then there's the, the combination of the two. I would say the top box is a definitely worthwhile add-on because it will also make pillion a pillion far more comfortable on the back. The MT-1100, as I said before, is built from the guts of the Africa Twin. And when I say the guts, I mean they've taken the engine and kept that wonderfully characteristic twin-cylinder engine that is in, found in the Africa Twin. They've tweaked it slightly to make it a bit smoother and a bit more road-going friendly, I think is the term they used. Um, and they've kept the same really nicely well-balanced and well-designed frame and subframe that comes with the uh, Africa Twin. There have been modifications in places, like it's got a new exhaust end can, um, it's lower suspension, less suspension travel, and a far lower seat height. So that probably that brings me to my first point about the MT1100 is just how comfortable and manageable this bike feels when you're pushing it around uh, car parks, driveways, traffic. The sea height is 820 millimeters, and while it may be uh, 138 kilograms uh, or 148 kilograms for the DCT model, I don't think it ever truly feels like a bike that, that's that heavy. The weight is all quite low down. You can two, uh, I'm six foot two and I can put two feet firmly on the floor. I can even stand up with my feet on the floor um, with the bike just resting underneath me. And it, it makes for a very, very relaxed and non-threatening, non-intimidating riding experience. In terms of the ergonomics, once you're on the bike, the, uh, the first thing you'll notice is that the seat itself is very, very well cushioned. You know, they do offer a comfort seat, but I'm not sure you really need it. I would spend multiple days in the saddle on this bike. I, I would argue that this standard seat is cushioned enough for, for all day comfort. And it's a very nice sort of scoop that your bum just sort of fits into. And then work any way to the feet, bum, hand sort of triangle. The ergonomics are very, very nice. The leg bend is a bit more acute than we find on the Africa Twin, but I've never found any problems with it. You know, in a three-day tour where I was riding most of the day every day, never once did I feel the need to stretch out my legs. The, uh, the handlebar position is nice, though it's a little bit more sporty than on the Africa Twin. I think Honda said they've sort of pivoted the seating position forward by about 10 degrees. Uh, to give it a more engaging and more road biased stance. In all reality, you know, while it does make you feel a bit more engaged with the bike, I do prefer the upright seating position on the Africa Twin. I think if I owned this bike, one of the first things I would do would be put on some bar raisers, but that's being very, very picky. It's not a necessity by any stretch of the imagination. Often you'll see touring bikes, long distance touring bikes fitted with smoother, you know, four cylinders, three cylinder engines, which just offer a perfectly smooth, glorious ride. The engine on the NT1100 is, oh, hello biker. The engine on the NT1100 feels very engaging. You feel every sort of bubble of of the engine through the foot pegs and through the hand, get, hand grips and when I first rode the bike I had some concerns that that might translate to discomfort or fatigue throughout the day when you're riding at motorway speeds. The reality is yes you do feel vibrations when you're riding at motorway speeds particularly through the foot pegs but do you know what then they weren't enough to put me off and I never once got a numbness in my hands or feet 
um, because I think the vibration frequency isn't as high as it as it would be to need to be to cause those problems. Perhaps the main thing that uh, I noticed about the twin engine when going at motorway speeds was just that there's a, a bit of an incessant drone caused by the sound of it, which is lovely when you're pottering around town and pooling along nice A roads and country roads like this and you accelerate out of the corner and you hear it. But when you stick at 70 and it's the only thing you can hear, it does get a bit, a bit drone-like. But, you know, a good pair of earbuds and you'll be all right. It's on roads like this where the NT1100 is an absolute delight. So, with the 17-inch front and back wheel and a slightly redesigned uh, steering geometry, the NT1100 is a far more sporty bike than the Africa Twin. You put it into the bends and it really, really handles supremely well. It's engaging, it's fun, you, it makes you want to just have fun on your bike, you know, for a bike that could be uh, touted as being quite boring. I've never had as much fun as I've had on the NT1100. I don't love it. And that's because you get to use most of the engine. Let me just stop at the, oh, no, nice. And when I say you get to use most of the engine, you know, it's a 101 brake horsepower, two twin cylinder engine. And it doesn't really, it doesn't really blow anything out of the water from a speed performance point of view. It's, uh, it doesn't feel underpowered, but it's definitely lacking a nice bit of oomph or a gut punch of acceleration. But again, you know, I, I'm not really the type of rider to like going particularly fast. So I've been really enjoying making the most of this engine. And when you hear people say that you can make the most of an engine, it means that you can, you know, ride it throughout all the rev range without feeling like you're going to kill yourself. You can really have fun on it. Now look, we're on this, this lovely country road here, going in and out of these sweeping bends. And this is where this bike is at its most beautiful best. So we'll break into this corner and as we pull away, like that's that's with my wrist pinned back. So yeah, it's not particularly aggressive, but it's more than aggressive enough to have an enjoyable ride. So another area that the NT 1100 was going to be improved upon was the wind protection, the wind and weather protection afforded. And that's given by this really nice wide tank here, which doesn't feel overbearingly wide. You know, I've just come off the GS Adventure uh, and that thing is a monster. I love big bikes. Uh, so I don't mind it, but for some people it's a bit overbearing. I don't think anyone would find the uh, NT1100 a bit too overbearing. It's very nice, small and manageable, but the uh, weather protection afforded by this wide tank is very, very good. You know, my legs here, down here, I don't know if you can see, uh, kept out of the oncoming wind. And when riding this in the rain, they were kept very nicely dry. Not totally dry, but you know, it deflected in a lot of rain. Um, and this screen, which is five-way adjustable, is very good. But there are a few ways where it's not very good. One is in its lowest setting, which it's in now, is it does cause quite a lot of turbulence for the rider. I mean, I'm six foot two, so I stand at, at that height. If I was a bit lower, it might be different. But at six foot two, the wind is being deflected basically onto my shoulders and into my face. That is completely changed when you raise it to its highest setting, which I'll do in a second. But to be able to adjust the screen, you need to stop the bike because you need two hands to do it, which is a bit of a faff, a bit of a hassle, but you know, needs must. Um, I don't know, do you know I'll pull over here and do it because I'd like a bit of respite from the buffeting winds. So, you can do it in the saddle if you wish. Step over, pull it up. Easy as that, there's required a bit of a bit of force there. But now in its higher position, it offers a very nice wind protection and you are behind this glorious, nice cocoon. It's, you can you can wrap up and snuggle in here and you, you're out with most of the oncoming wind, which is fantastic, I love it. Elsewhere for weather protection, you know, 
one of my one of the things that my pet peeves is a bike that calls itself a touring bike but doesn't come with hand guards and the NT1100 doesn't come with traditional hand guards and I initially thought that's going to be annoying but what it does come with is these lovely wind deflectors here these do a superb job of keeping oncoming wind off your hands and your arms I'd love to, I can't wait to try it in the winter to see if it keeps that, you know, the, the real chill off you. But in every time I've been riding it so far, I've had no problems at all. And I, I think they're, they're very well designed. It's a bit of wizardry from Honda. To keep your hands warm, you've got five step heated grips here. Um, and they're easily adjust, easily operated by pressing the function button on the right and then uh, flicking through on the left. Now, I know the NT1100 isn't an adventure bike. It's a, it's a sports tourer, so Honda calls it. But, you know, this is adventure bike rider. So let's take it down this green lane. This is a very, very gentle green lane. I, I would take any bike down here. But the NT1100 should go down here with absolutely no issues at all. You know, it's got, well, it's got a lot less suspension travel than the Africa Twin. It's still got more suspension travel than a lot of road going bikes. So something nice and light and gentle like this you're gonna have no issues on the standing position is actually surprisingly good for a road going bike the africa twin i think has one of the most comfortable natural standing positions of any bike that i've ridden um, and that is carried through onto this nt1100 with the proviso that the handlebars are a little bit more further forward so you do lean you do pivot forward a bit more but you know, if you if you are the very occasional green laner, you like doing country lanes like this in the sunshine when it's not wet and snotty underneath. This bike will do it. It's not made to be an off-roader, but you know, many bikes aren't made to be off-roaders, but they'll do nice, gentle green lanes. This is probably the extent of what I do on it, though. But it's nice to be able to do this with comfort and the suspension soaking up all the bumps. So when I mentioned the switch gear earlier uh, to adjust the heated grips. And when we get to the end of this lane, I'll go into the switch gear on the left. So let's just go down here. And do you know what? I'm very happy taking this down here. Feels nice and lovely and well balanced. The DCT gives it a nice, easy riding experience. Like I said, for a lot of gentle green lanes, you don't really need anything more. Well, there's a nice deer there, nice little muntjac deer. The joys of green laning in the UK, eh? One area where you might not want to take this green laning is the fact that it doesn't have much uh, protection. So if you do drop it, yikes. Right, so we'll take a left out of here. And we'll talk about the switch gear. So as I mentioned, the heated grips are operated by a switch gear, a switch on your right hand side, which is your function button. You press that and you cycle between uh, heat grips, headlights, whether you have them automatic or not, uh, and sound when you've got your headset connected. Once you've done that, it's a simple case of flicking up and down on the button on the left. Now the left hand switch gear is where the bikes have drawn a lot of criticism, and I said bikes because the Africa Twin has the same switch gear as the NT1100. Now, if you count up all these buttons on the left-hand side in total, you get, I think it's 15 plus the two manual uh, DCT up and down controls. 15 buttons on a switch gear is a lot of buttons, and it rightly got a lot of criticism from the press and owners when they first stepped on the bike. Because when you do first step on the bike, it's confusing, it's overwhelming, you don't know which one to press. But hear me out. After maybe a week of riding this bike, this switch gear will be second nature to you. You won't be confused by it. You won't have the shock inducing, terror inducing moment where you're fumbling around trying to decide which one to press. You know, I remember someone cut me up uh, and I was trying to furiously find the horn and all I was doing was pressing the indicator and the star button and whatever. Um, but now it's 
easy. It's very easy to use and it really makes sense when you consider what it's used for. This whole switch gear here is required if you want this beautiful dash here. And this dash setup is one of the best I've come across on a bike because I, I think Apple CarPlay is perfect for touring. Should mention now the Honda NT1100 and the Africa Twin come with this dual beautiful TFT screen and the bottom is a smaller LCD dash which shows minimal but important information like speed, total mileage and what gear you're in. When you plug your phone in, if you've got an Apple you go to Apple Play, if you go to an Android you go to Android CarPlay, I think it's called, Android Auto sorry, Apple CarPlay is the other one and then you can interact with your phone through the switch gear on the left hand side. You also need a headset to be able to, to do this. Um, so you can, you can pair your headset. I've got a Cardo on right now and I've just paired that to the phone, uh, to the bike which is paired to the phone and together they all work wonderfully to give you this really nice seamless experience. Some would say why do you need CarPlay on a motorcycle and I will tell you now the navigation aspect of it is worth it alone. I, on this bike you will not have to faff around with external sat navs and power chargers and or we don't have to worry about using your phone as a sat nav and having it fall off. Having it integrated into the display of the bike and controllable through this left hand switch gear is just so good from an ease of use perspective. It is honestly, try it, use it, get used to it, and you won't want to go back. This is how premium bikes should do navigation and uh, phone integration. You know, I remember trying on, I think it was the Ducati Volkswagen V4S, trying to get the, uh, the navigation working. You have to download two different apps for your phone and it's, it's, it's just a faff. On here, the Apple CarPlay navigation is brilliant. And you know, if you like to listen to music, you can even get Spotify up. You can, you can make phone calls if you wish. Some might say it's distracting. Well, I say it's only distracting if you're, you know, willing to get distracted by it. But look, look at this. We're at this junction now and I'm easily able to paddle the bike with two feet flat on the floor. Manageable is this bike's. The manageability is the main selling point on this bike for me. It's just so accessible and fun to ride. Sorry, the NT1100 comes with five different riding modes, three preset and two customizable ones, user one and user two. Each one comes with varying levels of engine braking, um, traction control, etc. And they just change the feel of the bike a little bit. I've not really fiddled around with user one and user two. I've, I've been quite happy to keep mine in uh, tour. And if you if you recognize where we are, it's because Ragley Hall and the Adventure Bike Rider Festival is just on that road there. So if you're coming, coming next year, that's where you'll be. And I would highly recommend you do come next year. But I would say that, wouldn't I? So this next section of the ride, we're going to get on to a nice little bit of a road where we can experience the Honda NT1100 at motorway cruising speeds. Now, if you're going off down the Alps or you, well, any tour really, you're going to probably inevitably have to do some motorway miles. So a bike that touts itself as a touring bike should be comfortable at speed. It should offer nice weather protection, should be have enough power to spirit you along without stressing out, even if you've got luggage and a pillion on now. And ideally it has cruise control, like the NT1100 does. So, so as we get off here, I'll pin it back and you can see just It, it does move a little bit. It, it gives a nice growl when you do get going. But as we get up to motorway speeds, if this car in front will let us, so we're at 70 now. 
the bike feels very well planted. It feels solid, it feels stable, it's cutting through the air really nicely. And like I said, this screen is providing a lot of protection from the oncoming air. No, here is just dead air. It's lovely. Especially, I mean, it's extended onto my arms as well. If I wanted to, I could stick it in cruise control now and it would carry on my along really nicely. It's adjustable on the left hand side. Sorry, on the right hand side. I've been commuting on the Honda NT1100 for a couple of months actually, to, to, be, to be honest. And I've really enjoyed a few things about it. First one being the uh, fuel economy of the bike. Right now it's saying that my average miles per gallon has been 56.5, which I think is very acceptable for a 1,000, uh, I think it's 1,084cc motorcycle. That is a decent fuel economy and one that's not going to make you feel the pinch too much when fuel goes up to 2,000 litre or whatever it is now. The next thing is just how, you know, it's like an Africa Twin but everything's condensed. Everything feels a tighter package and the lower height of it makes it far more maneuverable. In, in and out of the garage, around the driveway, and then on your commute if you're going around traffic, it makes it so easy to paddle around traffic and to the nimbleness of the 17 inch tire front wheel, sorry, it lets you dip and dive in and out of traffic. It's not built as a commuter, but it just adds to the you know the perfect all-rounder tag that Honda I think Honda has given it themselves actually haven't they? I think they said it's one of the it's their perfect all-rounder so I'm just going to show you how easy it is to use this TFT dash when you're riding if you've got your phone linked up say let's say we're riding and I want to go to the nearest petrol station I could just navigate with my left finger my left thumb and find the nearest petrol stations press enter and it will navigate you there and because it's all linked up to the internet on your phone, it will avoid traffic and stuff like that. I've read a few reviews of the Africa Twin online, which I said the split dash is pointless. Um, and the, the bottom LCD display is a waste of time, and it's not a very good display, etc. But I think that's a load of rubbish, really, because you'll notice if I've got my Google Maps up or Apple Maps up on my CarPlay, I can't see my speed or any other information for that matter. So having that LCD there is totally necessary. And the split is perfect. The only thing I wish that they showed on that LCD display is your fuel level. You know, I'd be more, far more concerned with my fuel level than my total miles because I've had a few instances where I've had Apple CarPlay on and going down the motorway and I've entered my reserve fuel. Now the, light, the fuel light comes on here but it's not the brightest, so it is quite easy to miss. So that's something to pay attention to. If you've got the Apple CarPlay open, you will need to pay attention for the fuel light. When I first was given this DCT Honda, my heart sank a little bit. I really, really, really hated the thought of an automatic bike. I thought changing gears brings me more into the ride allows me to connect to the motorcycle I'm riding and it's just part of riding you know you you want to nail the corner you want to get out of there shift up a gear and fly off but you can't do that on MC, uh, DCT or can you one thing I've noticed about DCT and uh, I'll be honest after a few months of riding this I am a complete convert to DCT I love it I, I think it's excellent because you, you change how you ride to suit the system and when you pick up the, the finer details of DCT and you change your riding to adjust to it, you know how to make the bike change down in gear, you know how to make it change up in gear, you know how to ride at slow speed. You know, but one, often, one criticism of DCT often is that there's no clutch, so you can't do slow speed maneuvers. You simply just replace that clutch for the back brake and then slow speed maneuvers become just as easy with a DCT bike. I will say on the NT1100, you know, I spend most of my time in the sport setting because the drive setting 
is probably only good for really relaxed riding or when you're on a motorway you just sit back in 70 and do nothing else it changes up gear way too fast it, it you know for instance i'll be approaching a roundabout and i'll be in fifth gear i'll go around the roundabout and it will shift down to fourth both gears are way too fast to be going down around around about 30 miles an hour sport mode that changes everything the gearing on sport mode is pretty much perfect it changes when you want it to you can make it change up and down by being a bit more aggressive with the throttle or easing off the throttle putting the brake on and if you find yourself they really wanted to ride manually you can use the flippers on the left hand side to go down gear up a gear it does feel a bit artificial as opposed to using a gear shift on your left but it's there if you need it also there's not forgetting the fact that dct opens up riding to a whole new world of people hello friend so look we'll go we're in DCT now, we've got some slow speed maneuvers coming up. I'll see how long I can keep it going behind this car without ship slipping the clutch in. See, you can, by using the back brake, keep it steady. Now, hill hold control would be nice, wouldn't it? But if it doesn't come with that, it does come with a nice handbrake if you've got the DCT model. Don't ride off with that one, otherwise you'll break it. I mentioned the suspension earlier, um, mainly how it's been, it's got less suspension travel than on the Africa Twin, but it has more than most road only motorcycles. You do, and I also mentioned that it'd be nice to have better suspension because you do feel it getting a bit out of shape when you're really putting it through its paces in twisties. It's not enough to, to scare me, and I could just adjust my riding to it. But you do feel it wobbling a little bit as you're going around burns. The, the obvious answer is to not push it so hard. And this isn't a bike you want to push hard anyway. I won't get too close to this hay. I don't want hay bales falling on me. Let's go around this bike. Gah! You see, in sport mode, there is acceleration. It's not, like I said, it's not a gut punch of acceleration. And you hear how long it's holding onto this gear because it's in sport mode. And now it's slowly, slowly recognizing that I don't need to save my ass by going around a truck anymore. So it's coming to nice, relaxed touring mode. So yeah, it's not a gut punch, it's not aggressive, but manageable and that manageability again it comes back to it this isn't the sort of bike where you're likely to you know lose your license on or let your confidence outweigh your ability because the bike you can use all the bike and you feel like a badass using all of the bike okay if I could improve one area it would be the angle of the bike where it looks like an XADV. I don't want to ride a big XADV. I want to ride a cool badass touring bike. And the NT1100 is that cool big badass touring bike. I'm very much enjoying it and you need to take one of these out for a test ride. Honda says that the NT1100 is everything you need in one motorcycle. Now there's an old saying that you can be a jack of all trades and a master of none, but people often forget the second part of that saying, which is sometimes it's better to be a jack of all trades than a master of one. And the Honda NT1100 is a true jack of all trades. Whether I'm rolling the bike out of my garage on the weekly commute or spiriting down A and B roads on the weekend ride, or going further afield on a longer distance tour, the Honda NT1100 will take it all in its stride. And the fact that you can get everything out of the engine just makes it all more enjoyable. Now it's this capability and manageability that makes the Honda NT1100 one of the most enjoyable bikes I've ridden in the past 10 years.